What's up YouTube, Capital G here. So we're talking about ARG Richmond, Virginia that happened over the weekend and I'm not going to go too far in depth as far as the event. Uh, the event was less than 300 people, I think 275 to be exact. It really wasn't a super large event and I mean after like I looked at the top 16 decks and what I saw from uh, the stream, it didn't look like there was really anything that particularly interesting, but I did notice Austin Jones's top 16 Cleford deck. Now, I have to preface this video by saying I will try to be objective in this video because I actually know Austin Jones personally. I've met him. I met him two regionals ago and we've talked. Uh, we talked a lot over those the span of two regionals where uh, like within the span of two weeks i went to two regionals and he was at both of them and i know he's a very good player at the fredericksburg one uh we both went seven two i think i got 16th and i want to say he either got 15th 18th or 17th i know that after swiss we were like within a couple of like spots from each other so he's a really good player and he told me at that event that he was going to continue to play cleford now he wasn't able to make it back to day two so unfortunately he had the forfeit he just wasn't able to play which I mean, honestly, the event is less than 300 people. Why the fuck do you even need a day two at an ARG? But that's a different question for another video. What I liked about this deck, and the reason that I'm talking about it is... I think that this is one of the best Cleford decks that I've seen in a long time. At least, like, for this meta right now, this is damn near close to perfection. Like, this is almost exactly what I would run. Like, you see, for starters, he's main decking six hand traps. Like, the best two hand traps in the game, Maxi and Effect Veiler, and he went balls deep. He ran three of each, which means generally in your first hand you should have one of them and despite what some people think like maxi is still really good against necros because for them to do any play they're gonna have to give you a card if they summon that send you that mind you you activate maxi you're drawing one card but generally they can't mount cleefort with one card like your first summon isn't just gonna be trashula your first summon is generally gonna be like unicorn which doesn't really do that much against Cleford. If you want to make any advancement in your plays, you have to give the Cleford player more cards. Another thing that I liked about this deck is he did not run Mirror Force. I've never understood why Cleford players ran that card. I just thought it was terrible in that deck. Like, it makes sense in Yosinju and Teller Knights because Teller Knights are super weak. All the monsters are very low stats, but every monster in this deck that you're going to summon is a base 1800 attack. Like, you can't bully Cleford around. Like, Cleford is a deck that bullies. It flips over skill drain and it says, Hi, motherfuckers. We're just going to play straight beatdown now. Like, you can't bully that type of deck. And Yosinju, it makes sense because your monsters during your opponent's turn are never on the field. You need some way of protecting your life points. And Mirror Force is just a blanket card that does that. Again, in Teller Knights, your monsters, Deneb, Altier, they're weak as fuck. So if you can't special summon, you need some ways of making sure that your opponent doesn't drop, like, a volcanic rock, a volcanic rocket and just beat the crap out of you so i've never quite understood why people play mirror force you know it, it's especially in a deck like this where you have things like sacrifice where you can literally turn one put a 2100 beater who can't even die by battle now i also think that hand traps need to be included in cleford right now because of monolith like i know that you can make the argument last format that Cleefort didn't really need it because they had three skill drain. But there's always been like I've seen so many situations where a Cleefort player will make the don't make the 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 really they'll go for a knockout punch with monolith, you know. And I mean they'll tribute for stealth or their tribute for for towers. And during the end phase, obviously you're gonna draw two or three cards. If you have stealth and you mount a scout, that means you just got to use scout twice. Maybe you got a recreate or or a, you know like um, a free sacrifice or a free Free climate change something good like that generally you're in a position where you should win but the thing is necros have never really cared about that like if a necros player says all right you get your two three cards during the end phase but guess what you can't use them <laughs> you can't set them so i can just kill you right in it right here and now but then if you're running all these hand traps like you're actually drawing in the cards that you can use right then and, and there the same it's the same exact principle for soul transition soul transition soul transition has been a fantastic card in this deck but it only really like you can only maximize this card if you're running buku hand traps because when you're when you soul transition let's say you're playing against ba right 
and you bounce that uh that carrier or excuse me you tribute the carrier bounce the dante you tribute the helix and blow up a back row if your opponent tries to you know like go over the top and they say all right well i've got a tour guide maybe you drew the maxi maybe you drew the valor so you have legitimate cards that you can draw right then and there and you can make counter punches you know uh cleveland towers this is a card that i thought like i predicted at the beginning of this format that this card would be staple in cleaves and then just like nobody was playing it and i'm just like isn't this card just a damn win condition? Like, anytime you have a monster where you literally drop it and you know that your opponent only has, like, one out, like, I'll take that any day, especially considering it's searchable. So, you know, it's kind of strange to see Cleefort players weren't playing, like, this card at all. You know, I mean, in the past, okay, but, like, after Necros came out, when players started getting rid of Decisive Armor, like, okay, you really don't have any outs to this. Same thing goes to Burning Abyss. Most Teller Knight players don't even run, like, a lot of Telenite players don't really run cards like Excalibur anymore. So I look at his build and I just really like it. You know, he, he kind of cut the the filler. You don't need buy, you don't need battle traps in Cleefort because the deck is already like it's already nothing but beat down monsters either. You don't beat beat down decks with brute force. You beat beat down decks with uh, effects. And if he has three effect veiler plus obviously skill drain, Phoenix chain, mind crush, you're probably not going to be resolving that many effects. And the last thing is the fact that he didn't main heavy storm or excuse me, <laughs> not heavy storm is that he didn't play storm or mystical space typhoon. A lot of people have been moving MST to the side deck just because the dominance of necros. And at first I looked at this and I was like, okay, that's good. But it's also risky. What if he plays Teller Knights? But then when you think about it, if you're going to use MST against Teller Knights, isn't it always going to be on Call of the Haunted or Oasis, the, the cards that let them go like plus two? Well, if you have three max C and you have Effect Veiler, you can pretty much control those plays anyway. If your opponent goes like Call of the Haunted and you ask for a target in Teller Knights and they're like Altier, you chain the max C, they... Even if they Alpha Nova, they don't draw a card. If they don't have a Tell Knight on board, you automatically draw one. And then if they get the Deneb, you draw two cards. So it's like you're both going to go plus. So at least you mitigate the amount of damage that is done here. So I'm looking at this deck. I'm liking it a lot. I like the fact that he ran um, a lot of nines because a lot of Cleefort players run into that problem. I don't think Disc is a card that wins a lot of games anymore. It doesn't really do anything against Necros because Valk is a thing and you really can't stop it unless you have Mind Crush. So this is definitely an optimal build. It's going to be interesting to see how the deck does when lose a turn comes into play because in the OCG, every single Clee for it, like that tops is all running lose a turn. I told you guys, lose a turn, I think is person. I think I personally think that card's going to have a similar impact like vanities. Like I think maybe the amount of decks that run the card, like it won't be as many as uh as vanities last format, but it'll have that same impact. Like you flip that shit over and you'll just shit on like uh necros and like teller knights and stuff like that. So again, let me know what you guys think. And oh actually if you looked at his extra deck, the most interesting thing about this deck is that he ran Sir Teller Knight Trevor. This is this is a 100% true story, right? And then you see here in the article, <laughs> the ARG deck list. Let's scroll to the bottom. Somebody actually asked him, did you really use Trevor in the extra? And he says, yes, but it's an ultimate signed by capital G. <laughs> I thought that that was hilarious. I remember at the regional, I actually signed the card, and he opted to play it just for that reason. So, definite shout-outs to him. He's a, he's a buddy of mine. But, anyways, thank you guys for watching, as always.